rich history. Today, hey, we're the as our guest today. Thank you for having me. As a game designer, he knows very well the joy of making his own works from scratch. I think I do. Making a video game starts from zero. It's total art, where you create the images, script and sounds from absolutely nothing. Today's guest, Mr. Goichi Suda, is the guiding force behind a host of video game series. Among his most famous creations is no More Heroes. This, among his other games, has garnered a strong following among audiences and players around the world. I write the dialogue of game characters with an awareness of what they might say on their way to death. Kind of like dying declarations. It may have something in common with haiku. Welcome to the world of photo haiku, the bringing together of image and poem. Each work must follow three rules. It has to be a three-line haiku. It has to portray seasonality. And it has to maintain a balance. Fusoku furi, picture and poem, can be neither too close nor too far apart. Now, on to our selection of the best works sent in from all over the world. Long summer, Dad's straight word moves me into the shade. It's a great use of imagery. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Very artistic. Very artistic. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Looks like a thumbtack there. Or a nail. There's a phrase to nail someone. Maybe his dad shot him a stern warning. <laughs> I get the feeling the photo came before the poem. Ah, uh, I think so, yeah. When I make a game, before I even write the scenario, there are times when the art, or an illustration, spins my imagination into completely unexpected directions. Looking at this haiku brings to mind my own writing method. How the image pulls it out yeah. of me. Actually, when I do a photo haiku, same thing. Very often, the, the image is the first thing that I focus on, and, and the, the poem comes out of that. Mm. 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 That's the charm of a photo haiku. The content of this poem is really hard to fit to an image. I imagine a father-son relationship. The father's words seem to have stayed with the son. The nail and its shadow are inseparable, like father and son. Well, that's right. Yeah, you can't get, you can't escape it. The content and the image are perfectly matched. Really fantastic, isn't it? Divorce process. The weight of the air between us. This one's kind of heavy. Mm, heavy is indeed, yeah. The choice of this photo is incredible. You feel just as if you're going to sink into darkness, down to the depths of the ocean. I wondered if perhaps the chain trailing down into the water could symbolize a child. The poem says, between us, and then you see the three directions of the chain, don't you? That's right, yeah. Well, four, actually. There's one shadow. Mm. This truly embodies Fusoko Furi. Exactly, yeah. Mm. At first glance, nothing connects the world of the poem with the photo. Imagine how blunt a photo of the parents with their child would be. Too direct. So the lack of directness makes it good. In the case of this photo haiku, the three periods in the first line mark a dramatic break. It separates the world of the beginning from what follows. 
and what follows is something utterly different. And it's this synergy of the two parts that creates a whole, an even larger world. It's not emotional, but you feel the emotion. Yes, of course. The heavy atmosphere is charged with emotion, which also makes this a very good work indeed. Suddenly a gust, scent of lilac, filling the room. The soothing breeze, and this coupled with the scent of lilac on the skin, appeals to the senses. It's such a pleasant way to spend an afternoon. Just around tea time, I imagine. That this person imagined the, the innocent smell of blooming lilac filling the curtain with motion was extraordinary. It was a wonderful combination. It's an effective use of light and shadow. The more you gaze at it, the more you can imagine what kind of room it is. No one's in view, but still, you gradually sense someone's presence. The simplicity of the language is good too, not overly fussy. A wordy approach to an intimate composition like this could be oppressive. Mr. Suda, what sorts of words do you choose when making a game? It's really almost identical to photo haiku. In cases where the image is more eloquent than the words, I prefer to be more economical with the language. Better than trying to explain too much and writing dialogue that nurses the meaning between the lines. That's a point haiku has too. It's often said that a haiku should not be too explanatory. Yes. Or I'll use a word with a completely different connotation to make them wonder. Ah, get them thinking. There are lots of possibilities in wordplay. Mount Fuji has erupted. Ah, get them thinking. There are lots of possibilities in wordplay. Mount Fuji has erupted time and again throughout its history. The most recent eruption happened during the Edo period, some 300 years ago. It's said that the explosion shot the ashes all the way from Shizuoka to Tokyo. In the days following the disaster, the people constructed a site on the shrine grounds to worship the sacred mountain from afar and pray for an end to the eruptions. But how could one climb a mountain that was impossible to approach? Something remains within the Fujisan Hongu Sengen Taisha Shrine to illustrate that history. It's quite large. Hi. It even depicts the sea. This is the Fuji Mandala from the late 16th century. A mandala is a visual representation of the Buddhist worldview. This particular mandala shows how pilgrims climbed Mount Fuji. Here is the Sengen Shrine of today. Oh, I see. Are they bathing? <laughs> no, this is the Wakutama Pond, and it still exists even now, for performing one's ablutions. Ah, to purify themselves. They've disrobed down to their loincloths. The pilgrims come to the shrine for ritual washing, but look here, something's being burned. Oh, oh, yes. The box lid is open, and the writing says it's a bank chest, but what do you think he's doing? Taking an entrance fee? <laughs> no, he's handing out torches. For a night climb? 
Correct. They are all carrying torches as they climb. Atop the peak are three deities. From the left, Yakshi, Amida, and Dainichi Nyodai. And then we have fine specks of white. See there? Snow? Lotus petals. <laughs> From heaven? Exactly. The supplicants are so close to heaven that they can see divine lotus petals raining down. People believed that by climbing Mount Fuji, they could enter the Buddhist paradise. So just by looking at this mandala, we can understand the faith of those who lived 400 years before us. The wind of freedom takes me to the top again, away from sorrows. This next work comes from Uzbekistan. The photo of Mount Fuji is magnificent. In contrast to the majestic photo of Mount Fuji, this language here, for me, gives way to sorrow. This is a really difficult haiku. Maybe it's because the haiku uses really large words, really powerful words. Okay, the wind of freedom carries me to the top, away from sorrows. But the photograph is, is kind of an interesting combination because when we see Fujisan like this with the clouds in between, it seems completely separate from all these people living down below. And so it's like another world. I felt there were a few too many words. So would you cut it like this? The, the wind takes me to the top away from sorrows? As a composition, that works better for me. First, say all you wish to say, and then subtract whatever is unnecessary, leaving only the words that still communicate the heart of your poem. In my view, a good composition has an awareness born from trust. The poet should trust in the reader to understand what the poet is saying. Everyone loves Mount Fuji. Absolutely, we love it. Yep. A game creator acquaintance from abroad visited me in Japan, and upon arriving, just straight off climbed Mount Fuji, like he'd done it before. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Again, right. Uh. It was like, I got to climb Mount Fuji again, or so it felt. Among the world's many grand mountains, Fujisan is unique, with a special place in the hearts of the Japanese and people all over the world. Of the many seasonal words of haiku, it is distinctive. Normally, snowmelt is a seasonal word for spring. But here, snowmelt on Mount Fuji signals summer, since Mount Fuji is crowned with snow even in summertime. That's Mount Fuji. Then there's another seasonal word, Red Fuji, indicating late summer, when the peak is rich with morning sun colors. Any more colors? Like a blue Fuji? <laughs> no, but what season would a blue Fuji be? Feels like summer, no? If a poem yields even a single famous phrase, a seasonal word can be born. From a single poem. Give me Blue Fuji then. That's right. Yeah, we're waiting for you. Late summer. Our flirting heads south. I confess I didn't understand this composition. Mr. Suda, did you find anything of interest here? These old ruins in the photo, they just feel dangerous. It's like the location of a slasher movie. <laughs> you imagine Jason or the Texas Chainsaw guy hiding inside. Feels like something's going to happen. A desolate outback in America is perfect for monsters. A young couple rides out here on a summer's night, starts making out, and then gets attacked. <laughs> Hidden terror waiting to strike. I get that image instantly from this scene. 
That's something. I wonder, does the last line indicate a bad direction? It's kind of made me laugh a little bit because there's a slight humor to it. And yet, if you're heading south on this road, it's the end of the relationship. So I think it's going bad. It's taken a bad turn and end of the summer, end of the relationship. I think that's what it means. The sky looks that way too. It's very disquieting. Definitely a bad end here. <laughs> mm, I think so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a hospital ward. The old ladies show off their age. This one's pretty humorous. The photo is black and white, and it shows a plate sitting atop a cutting board filled with what looks like dried fruit. And dried fruit, mind you. It's not fresh fruit, which gives it an ironic twist. The only thing the ladies on the ward have to show off now is their age. And as an old lady myself, it hits a spot. <laughs> You're not an old lady. <laughs> what do you think? It's a very charming work. I imagine the ladies all together having a grand time enjoying their girl talk. But then, while lost in their chat and gossip, the fruit's gone and shriveled up. I got that feeling from the photo. You don't see any old women in the photo, but you can almost hear their girl talk in the background. I loved the humanity in this poem. The, the poet has observed so carefully the ways of women, and we always show off our jewelry or our new hairstyle, but when you get to an old age, what have you got left but your old age? And these ladies saying, oh, my back really hurts. Oh, my knee doesn't work at all. And it's, it's somehow lively and, and sweet and shows that they're still full of life. A shade of mist, Fujisan hides all day. Fascinating. Mount Fuji rarely shows all of its artful beauty, even in a full year. That's part of its charm. The rainy season begins, and some days Fujisan seems to have vanished. Still, the town turns up so many variations on it. The Mount Fuji World Heritage Center, Shizuoka, opened last year as a comprehensive exhibition facility for all things related to Mount Fuji. Its facade was designed as an inversion of the peak's shape. So many colors. Yes, indeed. All representing Mount Fuji. A stationery store in town makes ink for a fountain pen they say was inspired by Fujisan. Even when it's invisible, Mount Fuji is always close to the heart. Yes, since we've come so close to Mount Fuji, shall we attempt a haiku on it? Yes, it's my first attempt though. Please show me how. Mount Fuji hides under a mantle of rain and myriad green leaves. The main conceit here is the curtain of rain, something like a mantle or a shroud. Behind this, Mount Fuji is hidden or disguised. The word mantle is good. Isn't it? Make note, and by all means use it. Mount Fuji hides in the souvenir shops, Blue Fujisan. Oh, I like this. It's exactly like mine, since Fujisan's hidden today. I wonder why the shop's Fujisan is blue, blue and white. It's somehow symbolic. So I think blue Fujisan might work as a seasonal word. There's a summer feel to it. Haiku is about seeing something as it presents itself. 
And if you find it interesting or fun, you write it. Simple, right? Simple and fun. I had other thoughts too. About nine of them. How sublime. Even a blue Fujisan series. Oh, you must write that. <laughs> For our next program, we will be accepting verse-only haiku entries without an accompanying photo. Shizuoka is famous for its tea plants and has been called the green tea capital of Japan. The theme of these haiku is tea. Soft breeze, bringing bird songs, tea picking. Soft breeze, bringing bird songs, tea picking. Sunset, honey dripping in my cup of tea. Sunset, honey dripping in my cup of tea. Long bus journey, after a tea break, the drivers hum. Long bus journey. After a tea break, the drivers hum. In Japan, tea has been featured in a great many haiku throughout all of the four seasons. It gives rise to various deep feelings of history and culture. <laughs> 